I hit a parlay on Tuesday, so what I do, I got on the first flight. Oh, the bugle! The bugle! We're here in Kentucky at Churchill. Shh, do you just say it quiet for that? Is it like... Just listen to that. You know what that means, baby? That means it's derby time. Something called the Oaks is tomorrow. It's like a pregame show to the derby on Saturday. I'm so excited. The music is pumping. There's something called a $1,000 mint julep that I'm going to try. Uh, who do you think's on our show today? How about The Voice? The Voice of the whole thing of the Triple Crown. Larry Colmus is on the program. Mike Cropoli, a spitfire, a firecracker, also a bajillionaire. He's on the program. He owns, co-owns the f- horse Forte, who's the favorite, who's not named after 22, my favorite bear, but who is also co-owned by the owner of the Florida Panthers who are taking down the Leafs who took down the Bruins it's all happening also who am I missing Hall of Famer undrafted Warren Moon on the show it's up in Mint Juleps let's go Do you want to tell me when I'm on the air? <laughs> who, are you, who are you texting over there, Richard? Welcome to our show. They let me fly without an IFB. We're just rolling here on a Thursday Thursday show. We will be here live all day. We will be here live all day tomorrow. Head over to FanDuel Sportsbook. Have a little fun. I'm a little nervous to go up and do the whole window thing. Maybe somebody will teach me. Maybe that somebody will be Warren Moon who will be joining our show. He's a big-time fan of the Derby. I hear Ian Rappaport's running around here with a bow tie. I hear... Uh, Mike Tarico's making the rounds, getting ready for big action on NBC. We are kicking off Triple Crown season, FanDuel sportsbook style. And look behind me at something called a paddock. Never heard of it before. I thought that's where you locked up people when they streaked, uh, like on a on a field. Like you, what you lock them up in a paddy wagon. That's what I got there. That's okay. Here we go. I haven't even had a mint julep, but this is the Kentucky Derby. Woodford Reserve is the main sponsor. We're going to hit up a mint julep in a second, uh, but we're going to have some fun. I've never been here, and here's what I want to say. Soon. Seriously, I can't, I'll admit, this was never like a bucket list dream of mine to come to the Derby. It wasn't pulled either way. If I landed here, that'd be really fun and amazing, and I understand how special it is. But I know a lot of you out there have it on your bucket list, and it's high on the list, and you want to come, and it means a lot. I'd like you, those people, that community, to tell me what I need to do. Where should I go? What should I see? What can't I miss? Whether it's food, whether it's where to sit, where to take a picture, who to meet, who to look for, uh, let us know. Let me know at Up and Adam Show, and I'm going to try to sort of bring you that through the lens uh, during our show. We have an awesome one. We're going to talk to the voice of the whole thing. He inherited the gig back in 2011, and now he's he's doing all the biggest races, and that would be Larry Colmus. And he's caught some uh, Kentucky Derby and Triple Crown winners in his day, too, so that's really fun. Um, and there was a long shot last year, so that was really great with uh, Rich strike. I'm learning so much. I'm really absorbing. I'm like a sponge when it comes to this stuff. And we also have a bit of fun with, I mean, our whole crew's here. Hamilton's here. Taylor's here. We got Cat on Glam. We got Richard pretending to make business calls during the show. Uh, but we also have Marissa, who had a tough travel day, Ooh. like so many of us. It was a beauty. It was a beauty. So let's so talk fun. about the scavenger hunt that you put together for me. Yeah. We, we did one for Super Bowl. We got to do one for here. It's our first time here. I need you to find a couple things for me for these next three days. Okay, I'm, I'm down. I need you to try and enjoy a mint julep. That's the first one. Try I n- to enjoy one? Try to enjoy one. It really doesn't sound It's like drinking one. a mojito that doesn't taste good. It doesn't sound like oh. my thing, but we'll try. <laughs> I need you to convince someone you own a horse in this race. Can you do that? That I like, just talk myself. I look yeah. like a million bucks. As you do. People are dressed so fancy. I literally feel like a scrub here right now. Everyone is dressed. Everything. It's only Thursday. What are you guys wearing on Saturday that you're dressed like this already? Wait. Do people have multiple hats? I think so. You know they're called fascinators? Oh, God. That's what they're called. Anyway. You're learning so much. Uh, I need you to eat some burgoo for me. That's one of the... Tell me what that is. It's a dish. Hey, Helen, can you, can you like A little bit of a stew these? dish. Sorry. A little bit of a casserole. A stew? Yeah. A, a it, it looks pretty good. Yes. Okay. Sounds good. I need you to drink a Kentucky Lily for me tomorrow. What that's is the that? dr- That's the drink for tomorrow what for is the it, Oaks. Whiskey, bourbon too? I think so. All right. Great. And I need you to find a Vinny Vines for me. A guy oh. who's just wearing, you know... Plenty of, listen, plenty of Vinny Vines. I see one walking by right there's, now. Yeah, there's a Fidel, <laughs> there's an SAE, there's a... Yeah, Sikai? there's a lot. Sikai over there. Yeah, we, got, we got plenty of those coming. Okay, so Vinny Vines is pretty easy. Yes. Okay. And I need you to find a derby hat in every color of the rainbow for me. Roy G. Biv. Every Roy single G. Biv. color. Okay, we're going to do um, photos of that. Mm-hmm. I want to find Ian Rappaport. I want to find an NFL wide receiver. Those are tougher to come by. Yeah. Does Julian Edelman count? I don't think so. Are we going to have a Wes Welker situation so we want to hand out <laughs> stacks of $100 bills? I'm here for it. I haven't even had coffee today. Wow. I've eaten you are and drank it. 
nothing. But that's what we have on our list. And I'm going to take care of your first one right now. Walk with me here. Here we are, Churchill Downs. It's amazing. And there's no Vinny Vines. We have some uniformed guys, though, here. So, please. Gentlemen, how we doing? How we feeling? How we living? Yeah, how, hello. How you doing? How you doing? Okay, great. Um, hi, hi, hi. Okay, the gates are now opened. Welcome to Churchill Downs. We're gonna make our way over here because we've got lots and lots of fun. And this is this is where some crazy stuff's gonna happen. And I want you to know how exclusive this is. There are only 150 of these drinks even available, and it's all for a good cause. I can't even get in. I'm not fancy enough. I don't know. Do I go around? Walk with me, talk with me, here we go. Hi, hello. It is so, so lovely to meet you. I'm Kay. Hey, I'm I, I would love you to introduce yourself with your full title because it's pretty, really impressive and so special for this weekend. Well, thank you. I'm Chris Morris, the Master Distiller Emeritus for Woodford Reserve. And here we are, and I understand, my friend, that there is a one, here's a microphone for you. Oh, There's you. a $1,000 special mint julep. Tell me all about yes, it. Yes, we have 100 silver cups, $1,000 each, all to raise money for charity, the Secretariat Foundation, and we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of Secretariat's record-setting derby. And we love that. Now, what does the where do the funds go? It's a thousand dollars. People can go online, of course, and secure their cup, and then they can come pick it up here. Correct? Yes, we're going to fulfill those wonderful. Uh, cups on Derby Day itself. Okay. So they're not here today, but I do have one for you. Uh, now let's talk about that. I love that. Look, look okay. and this is one of our $3,500 cups. They're gold. They're actual real gold. Yes. And that, Can we get a close-up on this? That and, is unbelievable. And each cup is adorned with Secretariat silks, which were blue and white, but we can't have white, so we have silver, and the blue are sapphires. That is unbelievable. And how did you? How long have you done this? This is our 19th year. Your 19th year, though. Mint Julep program. Wow, unbelievable! The proceeds all go to a great cause, and there's a different cause every year, as I understand. Yes. This year, it is the Secretariat Foundation. That's right. All right, let's cook one of these up. We'll okay. Take his, uh, take his microphone, maybe. Please. I'll take that. I don't think that you know. I used to bartend. I couldn't do it with a microphone in my hand. That's for sure. We're gonna start with our beautiful cup, and we are going to add some Here? Woodford Reserve. The official bourbon of the Kentucky Derby. And some mint. We're just going to get a couple mint leaves and express the oil in the cup and drop oh. those in. Can you tell me why we're drinking mint juleps, why it's so special and so signature to the Derby? Well, this is a tr Kentucky tradition that dates back into the early 1800s. Mint juleps were part of the horse racing scene, and it became the official drink in the 1930s of the, of the track. It smells delicious, I'm not going to lie. And the ice has to be very specifically shaped that way, correct? It has to be crushed ice because it's going to be a slow melt. It's meant to sort of last between races, and that's an hour long. Okay. So this drink needs to last a while. Most people don't realize... Well, this drink's not going to last a while. I'm so, so sorry to say. Most people don't realize you drink a julep through a straw. So for your 3500 you get a silver straw. We're going to garnish with some more mint. And this year... A little floral to celebrate the great secretariats. Virginia. I understand you are a member of the Kentucky Bourbon Hall of Fame. How does you? How does one do that? You, you work a long time with the bourbon industry and hopefully do some something significant. And you did certainly here, and you're helping you raise for a good cause. Now, can I actually drink this? Wow, so this gold will keep it real cold, too, all derby. It's already getting frosted. It's freezing. It's so beautiful. I can't even explain. It's gorgeous. And here we go, my very first ever mint julep. Oh, that's good. Is that good? Wow. And for a good cause. Woodford. Woodford goes down smooth. That is. And, uh, again... Everybody, we really appreciate your support. Those who have bought the $1,000 and $3,500 cups, come back next year for Derby 150. It's going to be bigger and better than ever. What is it going to be made out of then? Oh, my gosh. I can't tell you yet. You can't tell me. <laughs> well, maybe after a couple of mint juleps, you'd be able to tell me. Give me your best advice. It's my first Derby. What's the thing that I need to go see and experience? Well, certainly watching the paddock, which is right behind us, to see the horses parade before the race, that's fabulous. And then on Derby Day, singing my old Kentucky home. It'll bring a tear to your eye. Everyone keeps saying, wear the waterproof mascara, Kay. <laughs> yes. Well, I don't do that, but it still brings a tear to the 
yeah. But when I go check out the paddock, do you have any ch- tips for me if I'm trying to have a little fun, head over to those windows and pick a horse? What am I looking for? Well, look at look at the horses. Look at the ones that are really excited and ready to run as opposed to those that are really relaxed. So I always go for the ones oh. that are ready to go. I oh, See, I've heard the opposite. Now I don't know what to do. I met the owner of Forte, and I think that I just might pick that horse because I like the owner so much. Well, and that's one thing you'll learn about horse racing and derby, as you all know. Everybody has a different opinion. It's amazing. Okay, we, sorry? Yeah, we'd like to know. Oh, Marissa wants to know your, Marissa, get in here. You ask. You've got your microphone. Oh, sir. <laughs> oh, no, I'd like to drink that. Okay, let's do that. We were wondering, do you have a favorite this week? Do you, what's your opinion? I have not because I'm going to wait. Okay. You know, He's first we wait. Paddock. First we wait to see what positions are pulled, and then I, if, are there scratches? How the weather going to play out? And then I have to talk to my very good friend Mark Bacon, who knows what he's talking about okay mark bacon we gotta go find mark bacon Uh-oh. but Absolutely. can i ask you to read that sign for me sir okay warren moon all right warren warren moon is next on the show we'll be back on up and adam's hall of famer we'll be back okay i'm taking this goodbye Up and Adams at the Derby. I've had a $3,500 mint julep today. What have you done lately? You're taking a look at those twin spires. This is Churchill Downs, the majesty of it all. And I am with, man, nine-time pro bowler. We've got a Hall of Famer on draft. Okay, is nine right? Done a few things. Yeah, you've done a few things. You're also yeah. quite you're quite taller than I. You called me out on how I'm well, stepping on the step. No, I'm a quarterback. I, we better be a little bit tall. You yeah. know, everybody can't be Bryce Young. Well, I was going to say, I'm the Bryce Young of television host standing here at five feet tall. You like Bryce Young. You like Bryce Young. I love Bryce Young. Yeah. I think he was the best quarterback in this draft. I've watched him his whole career and uh, just love the way he plays the game. He plays it very smart. Uh, he seems like he has eyes in the back of his head. Uh, even though he's a 5'10", he finds all the different um, – passing lanes to throw the football to and he's very very accurate with the football so those are the things you look for in a quarterback plus he has great leadership ability i cannot believe i'm standing here with warren moon at the kentucky derby right now there's a horse in back of us i don't know if you can see i don't know what his name is or what he's his deal is life. he's uh, <laughs> we're here at the uh, with a uh, woodford reserve we're going to get some of that it's, uh, it's a full weekend i've never been you're my cheat code what do yeah. i need to be prepared for warren a little bit of everything, especially the fashion. You're going to see all different yeah. types of fashion. Um, I've been here. This is my 20th year. So uh, I have I came in the year after I retired, and I haven't stopped coming since. And it's one of the best sporting events I go to of all the sporting events I go to every year. Why? And I go to all of them. It's because of the, I think that the tradition that goes along with it, it's over a 100-year race. It's the tradition. Uh, it's the fashion, it's the glamour, it's the food, it's the hospitality that they show down here in the South. All those things combined, and then you have two minutes of the most exciting uh, sports ever in that race. So. And what? So what pulls you back with your after year? Just the tradition you want to come celebrate the weekend? It's a, it's a, it's a full meal. You know, I love big time sporting events. So I've been to the World Cup. I've been to you know big time tennis events. I've been to Super Bowls. I've been to all the different big time events. So this is this is another big time competition. But I have a group of friends that I meet here every year. Uh, we don't see each other much throughout the year. So this is where we get together. And we just have three great days of being down here in Louisville, Kentucky. I mean, if you're coming back for year 20, <laughs> that's doesn't say enough. Uh, ownership of a horse, ever thought about that? Never thought about that one. Those, Why? They're, they're so, too, that they're surprises too fickle. me. They're too fickle. They're I too mean, fickle. <laughs> Anything can happen with one of these horses. They can snap an ankle. They can get sick. Uh, they might not want to run that day. Uh, you just it's never, dramatic. you just never know what you're getting. And the horses that, that are the ones that have the great bloodlines, they cost a little bit more money to get involved with those yeah. horses. So, no, I've never, uh, never wanted to do that. I'm not a big gambler, believe it or not. The only time I gamble is here at the Derby. Okay, so tell I, don't, me I go to Vegas all the time, never gamble. Really? So tell me about that. You got to go up to this window, and you know what you're doing. Give me the, your best tip. Well, I look through the, uh, you know, th- the through book the, through the book, and I, and I look at you know what the horse has done, what their record is. I look at how they run on certain turf. I look at the jockey who's there. I look at all those different things, and I try and put together my best case scenario for winning. Okay, now there's a couple long shots. A long shot won it last year in Rich Strike, of course. I had that. that did horse. you? I did. What? Okay, well, I'm sitting next to you at the Derby then, if you knew that. That's amazing. I did. I, I won a lot of money on that horse. Wow, well, you're kind of not. You were a long shot coming into the league. Started yes, your I career was. at the CFL, a little older as a rookie in the NFL. You go yes, on to be a Hall of Famer. What do you tell these guys, like the Will Levis is from Kentucky, played at Kentucky? We're here at the Derby. He slides down the board. 
Uh, Second rounder, though. That's Kate. what I'm saying. He's still a high round still draft pick. I, know, I, I didn't I know. get drafted at all. I wasn't even considered as a quarterback. So Will's going to have a great opportunity going to Tennessee because there's a lot of uh, talk about, you know, Ryan Tannehill, what's going to happen with him. So he can be the guy that maybe doesn't have to come in and play right away. He can learn a little bit and then take over when it's his time. Sometimes that's a better position to go in than be in the high round draft pick where all the pressure is put on you to come in and play right away and turn a, a losing organization around. But you're telling me there's not much pressure. Your, your former Oilers, now yeah. the Tennessee Titans, they cannot go back next year and have to draft another quarterback. That would be three in a row, Warren. You're right. So, so that's why Will Levis is the guy, and uh, hopefully he is that guy. And I think, you know, he was a he was a projected first rounder. He did drop a little bit. Uh, what did he go, 38th pick or something like yeah. that? But lot, he still, lot, he went to a good team. Look at, look at uh, you know, some of the other quarterbacks that have gone in the second round. Things have worked well for him. Third round, Russell Wilson, you know, that type of thing. You go to a good football team, and all, all of a sudden the turnaround is faster. Do you think they should start in week one? You're saying you want him to develop. Do they have that luxury, though? You would start Tannehill? I would start Tannehill. I mean, Ryan Tannehill a couple of years ago was up for MVP. He had an off year last year. I think he'll bounce back this year. What would you tell these undrafted kids? Don't Just give up on you. Don't give advice. up on your dream. Uh, I'm a perfect example of that. You know, I wasn't drafted. Uh, I, I went to play in another country. I just kept working. I, I, I kept believing in myself, and of course, I'm sure they have people around them that will believe in them as well to keep them going, and just keep working at it. You have all these other leagues out there, the USFL, the the S XFL in order to go in there and help develop your skills if you're not ready for the NFL right now. So there's a lot of different options for young guys these days. You're such a legend. You know what I always associate with you, Warren? You were just ahead of your time. You, like, I don't know about that. You don't think so? I well, think Well, I so. do. I think in terms of, uh, of my skills, I was. Yeah. Um, because I was doing things that they're doing right now, and, and the quarterback position is being played now the way I tried to play it back when I played, you know, more of a dual threat type of guy. I didn't run as much in the NFL as mm -hmm. I did maybe in Canada my first six years in the league, but I ran enough to let people know that that uh, I could be dangerous. How would your games translate into this NFL? You'd be a top five oh guy, God. but we don't, you want, we don't even want to talk can about you that. Imagine, Lord, no, no, <laughs> we don't want now. to talk about that right now, but I, I'm just so happy for these guys who are getting a chance well, to listen. do it. Everyone says you're C.J. Stroud, right? C.J. Stroud is you. That those are the comparisons made. What did you make of those? I might move a little better than he does, but <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. But we both that. throw the ball very well. He's a he's a very good thrower of the football. I like his demeanor. He's very cool and calm, and that's kind of something I do always prided myself on being. So I interviewed last week at, uh, in Kansas City during the draft Rich Paul, who is LeBron's agent. Do you know the Warren Moon jersey story? I do, um, and I sent him a jersey for his birthday last year, signed. You sent LeBron the signed jersey? No, I sent oh, Rich Paul. Rich Paul, yeah. He didn't tell for us for his that. birthday party. Yeah, so um, I know that story very well, and it's it's uh, it makes me proud a little bit, I guess, <laughs> that, I, that I created a, a relationship there that has turned into a mega mega sports conglomerate. It's, it certainly did. Well, it was you and Fabulous because it was apparently his music video, and he was wearing your throwback jersey, and that's why. It stuck or whatever happened in those two. I mean, you're. And you're, I met LeBron when he was at the ESPYs coming out of high school uh, at 18 years old. So uh, history goes back a long way. And we love seeing that. <laughs> and we're, I love him. We're here with Warren Moon, who loves the Kentucky Derby. So we're oh, going to play a little yay or nay with him uh, in a little bit. But it is the greatest two minutes. That's why you said it was the best sports event. You go to all the biggest ones. What? Take me to the, the best or the most pressure-filled two minutes of your career. What would, the, what would that look like? Wow. If you had to clip off two minutes of that. It's a Man. tough question. Yeah, it is a tough question. I, I've you had a couple a lot, of big I've division of battles. Good, I've had a lot of good two-minute two minute battles. I've had a lot of good comeback wins. I don't know. I had one against Dan Marino when I was in Minnesota that was pretty good when we came back from behind in, in a regular season game, but you would have thought it was a playoff game the way we were playing because the game was built up between me and Dan as two, you know, two of the better of quarterbacks in the league at that Stupid time. Stupid media building and things up. I ended up. up hitting Chris Carter with a touchdown late in the ball game to win that one. You, is Chris Carter going to be here this weekend? Does he ever make it to the Derby? I bet I've he I've seen does. him here before, but I don't know if he's going to be here this weekend. What other NFL players pop by here? Man. Tom Brady used to come I here know. every year. Aaron I hear he's Rogers not coming. Is usually always here. He brings his, you know, all of his receivers and everybody. I don't know if he's going to be here now Aaron's because coming he's with this, the Jets. No, he is. He's coming this weekend. I, I hear. I mean, I see players from all over the league come to this. Is, this is a very uh, celebrity-driven event, believe it or not, and that red carpet is going to be hot on Saturday afternoon. I can't wait. I'm doing, I mean, do I tips? I don't realize I have to dress so fancy. I'm, I'm not kidding. Everybody, it's, thir it's, it's, a thir it's Thursday and people are. They're already dressed. You would have thought you that see, it's I Saturday. You see, I didn't dress for it 
Yeah. Because I just was, thought you, I was just coming out to talk to you casually. If he thought, well, this is pretty casual. <laughs> it's not bad. Okay, we're going to play a game. It's called Yay. But tomorrow I will be ready. Okay. I will be too. I, we better see each other tomorrow. Then. Gotta okay. have some pink on tomorrow. It's gonna Remember, be, it's breast I cancer awareness. I don't have any pink. You Everyone go tell buy me some. I'm so for breast cancer awareness. I just don't. Call have your pink. stylist. Get it. Get it here. Oh, I don't call my stylist. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Okay, we're gonna play a game called Yay or Nay. So you're gonna say Yay if you agree with it, a big Nay if you don't. Let's ride here. The horse Forte. That's the favorite. Wins the Kentucky Derby. Yay or Nay? Nay, the, the favorite rarely wins this thing, believe it or not. So many horses, and I think it's starting in the 15th position, which is way out there. So I don't think it's going to win, but if it does, great for great for that horse. Warren, I have to sit next to you at the Derby this year. <laughs> chocolate chip cookies are the best cookies of all time. I know you know a chocolate chip cookie. I know a lot about them. It, it depends on who's, but yes, chocolate chip cookies are the overall best. Best. What's the second best? Uh, oatmeal raisin. Oh, oh boy, that is a hot take. My goodness. With okay. a little chocolate okay, chip. Okay, Stephen added. A. Smith. Uh, okay, with a little chocolate chip. I like that. Um, Warren Moon's chocolate chippery, guys. Check it out. Watch it. Aaron Rodgers will lead the Jets to the Super Bowl. I think that's a, a nay. I think he's going to make them much more improved, but I don't think Super Bowl is in it. There's too many good teams in the uh, AFC, and there's a guy named Patrick Mahomes who's yeah, probably going to have something good. to say about that in the I AFC. I hope you don't run into Aaron Rodgers. That might be awkward. <laughs> no, because I uh, I wish him well. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes, who you mentioned, well he will he will win more Super Bowls than Tom Brady. Whoa, now that's a good one. I'd have to say nay right now. Seven. So wow. stupid. Winning seven is so that's stupid. That's crazy. If he has, he's gonna have to play until he's. 38, 40 years old. I mean, he might with these quarterbacks, how, how they're protected these wow. days. Not like Tell back in the day, Warren. Helmet marks all over my body. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. That's what the Woodford Reserve is for. Uh, the University of Washington will win the Pac-12 next season. Ooh, I'm going to say yay. 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 Yeah. We love that. LeBron James, the greatest of all time. I'd have to say yay. Wow. Especially if he wins a championship this year. It's a minute. What about if Steph wins it instead? Ooh. He moves up the ladder. That's a good series. But that guy, Michael Jordan, still dang good. It's true. The Tennessee Titans are bringing back the old Oilers jerseys in 2023. Yay. Is that Been happening? I'm waiting on that, yes. Is it happening? I talked with the owner about it. She was waiting for the uh, helmets to be approved. Now that you can wear the helmet, we're wearing the whole uniform this year. And it could be against the, ten the, the Houston Texans. Are we? To I'm. This is... This is the biggest news of the day. I don't, Lamar got his deal finalized. Cool. Fine. I don't care. That's fine. Are we joking? That's really the we thing? We are not joking. What do you make of Lamar? I love Lamar. Uh, I don't like that he represented himself. I think this thing would have been over a long time ago. He ended up getting the deal, basically, that he could have probably got months ago. From but, Rich uh, Paul, who has a Warren Moon signed jersey. But he ended up getting a great contract. It wasn't fully guaranteed, but it's a lot of damn money, Kate. It is a lot of damn money. There's a lot, a lot of $2 bets here at the old window betting on the ponies here. Uh, okay, we also want to talk to you about um, your charity and everything that you're doing. Tell us everything. Well, we started a foundation called Brothers in Arms, and it's myself, Andre Ware, first African-American quarterback to win a Heisman Trophy, Vince Young, college football All-American, and, and also uh, pro Hall of Famer. We started a foundation because we all come from single mom homes, and uh, we grew up without a dad. Uh, we all played in the city of Houston, and uh, we wanted to start a foundation where we looked for kids who come from single mom homes, who are involved in sports, not necessarily football, but just in sports, and then have the academic desire to go to college. So we, we fund scholarships, and we've given out 15 scholarships now in our first wow. three years, and just had a very successful golf tournament a week ago, and it's something we just want to keep building on. So if anybody wants to... Um, donate or hear more about what we're doing just go to brothersinarmshouston.com and you can get a lot of information off of our website i promise you we will get that information out there we appreciate you mr yeah. warren root more warren Mo look that's the woodford <laughs> i'm so slurring my words yeah, woodford to do that to woodford. you woodford why drink it alone i would love to hear what you sound like by the end of the day well, after a few more of those you have seen it and it's not pretty <laughs> warren moon hall of famer thank you and enjoy the derby thank you appreciate you We'll be back right here on Up and Adams. We've got Larry and Rapoli on the show.
race past the quarter mile pole in the Florida Derby and Mage got the jump on Forte as he goes to get Fort Bragg. Cyclone Mischief is fighting hard. He's still right there. Less than a quarter of a mile to come and Cyclone Mischief, he's up for a fight and tries to turn away Mage. Forte better hurry up. Funnel 16th of a mile. Forte starts to gather in the top horses. Here comes Forte. This is going to be very close, but the champion prevails. Forte wins. Good All right, man, listen, if you've ever had or enjoyed body armor, vitamin water, pirate's booty, you have this man here to thank, a man of many talents, one of the best entrepreneurs, most successful businessmen in the world, uh, and you, my friend, are adding a favorite horse in the Kentucky Derby to the list. How does that feel? Um, nervous, energy, uh, high intensity, high pressure, but a lot of fun. Why are you so, I want to say, obsessed in the best way with winning the Kentucky Derby? I think I'm just obsessed at winning in anything I do. Yeah. And the Kentucky Derby just happens to be a piece of it. So, um, you know, I love horse racing. I've been going there since uh, I was a 13-year-old kid. We both have immigrant parents, so we know what that feeling is like. And uh, my dad was a waiter. My mom was a seamstress. And, you know, I shouldn't even be able to pay to get into this track for the Derby Day, never mind having the Derby You favorite. said that. You said, I'm a guy from Queens. I don't belong here. And here uh, you are with the favorite horse in Forte. Uh, yeah, security stops me every time the way I dress. I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little underdressed compared to you today, but uh, I'm blessed, man. Yeah. I mean, Kay, it's, it's, you know, listen, I, I tell kids every day, I mean, you know, work 18-hour days, seven days a week, and you'll be successful. In what? I'm not sure, but just keep doing it. You also said to hire sore losers, which I love. Oh. You want to hire people with a chip on their shoulder. I always say, find me someone that likes to lose, and I'll show you a loser. Yeah, and that's I mean, not you, and that's why you're here. And it's not the first time. Like, you you haven't had success on this biggest stage. You are coming off a win, though, in the yeah. Belmont. You grew up 10 miles away. That has to be amazing. So you're reminding me that I'm 0 for 7. Yes, no. okay, no, no, okay. That's, well, that's yeah, I'm just trying to put that chip on your <laughs> yeah. shoulder. Make sure you're yeah. still fighting for yeah. something. Yeah. You didn't need to put that chip is on the shoulder. <laughs> but, but listen, at the end of the day... You know, I've won Breeders' Cups. I've won the Travers. I've won the Alabama. I've won the Belmont Stakes. I've won all the dream races that I used to watch on TV. Wow. And I've been here seven times. And, you know, I'm going to have 70 family members. Uh, led, my entourage is led by my seven-year-old daughter, Joya. Uh, my wife, Maria, for 20 years. Oh. And uh, my parents are coming out. I mean, to be early 50s and have a 83-year-old dad coming and a 78-year-old mom. And, and I'm just blessed. I mean, you I'm are. just happy to be here. Let's talk about Forte. This is going to be a different trip. 70 people coming, seventh trip. Why is this going to be different? You know, I, this is my best shot of winning. I mean, he's the favorite. He's six or seven. Um, you know, he's done everything right. He uh, he gets. He seems like he's getting better every start. Um, I think the biggest thing is, you know, he's two-year-old champion. Since he had a couple weeks off, a couple months off, came back and won back-to-back -back races at the Fountain Youth and Florida Derby. And he's just a smart horse. I mean, he just... Uh, he gets better every day. He's got a great mind with athletic ability. Do you talk to him? He's right over there. I mean, I feel like he hears you. He's right over there. No, no, he's, he's sharp. He, uh, he listens, and he's resting right now. He knows, he knows food comes out in about an hour, okay. so he'll, he'll, he'll come out. But, uh, you yeah. have him over there in 24, 20, but not in 22. Now, Matt Forte, I'm a football show. Yeah. I thought you named him after my hometown of Chicago. How'd you name Forte? I think only people in Chicago know Matt Forte, <laughs> just so you know. What? <laughs> okay, yeah, all yeah. right. All right, so... Um, you know, forte just means uh, it means strong in Italian. And, um, you know, when he was at the farm as a two-year-old at a, a stud, they would keep talking about this violence cult uh, who just was better and stronger and just, okay. you know, more mature, looked like he was a three-year-old versus two-year-olds. So I had luck naming a horse Italian, uh, 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 Vino Rosso, which obviously means red wine which I do a lot when I celebrate. Nobody outside of Italy knows that that means red wine, but <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> but, but it was good that we knew. Okay, <laughs> you know, so, yeah. um, and Forte means strong, so I wanted Amazing. to give him a nice, strong name, and he's lived up to, lived up to his name. Are you nervous? How are you going to handle this? Is the, you know, it's the two most exciting minutes in sports, the best minutes in sports, but they must be the most nerve-wracking for you. You know, it, it's so funny. Here, I really get nervous for Todd Pletcher, who's a great friend, and he's won two Kentucky Derbies, but this is what he wanted to do his whole life. I get nervous for Martin, his groom right there, who puts his heart and soul in all his horses. I get nervous for, you know, Ira Ortiz, who's, you know, an immigrant from Puerto Rico that mm. never won this race. Um, I want to win this race more for them than myself. You know, I really do. And uh, if we win, it's going to be great. 
And honestly, if we lose, it's going to be great also. Your partner said that he wants to win for you. How interesting. He's won the Kentucky Derby. He's on a bit of a winning streak, if you will, owning the Florida Panthers. They took it to the Bruins, which is yeah. a New York kid. You had to like that, right? No, I, we were rooting for the Panthers, and down 3-1 was amazing. And winning yeah. over time. And, you know, when you're at the eighth seed and you beat the one seed, it means you can beat anybody else. So, uh, you know. And uh, he's won the Derby before. He wants it for you. Yes. I'm a little nervous that he's going to win the Stanley Cup and win the Derby twice. Maybe I should pick a new partner. He's been winning too much. <laughs> or maybe I'm the reason why he's not winning. So. Well, you're also winning because you, you're sort of do boldly what you do at all, right? You're not just, you don't own a couple horses. You picked up about 270 of these things recently, I read. How do you go about naming them? You said how you named Forte, but you have a, you have a, a horse named not a cat but a llama, all one word. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, 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 the fun part is we get to, we have a naming committee. And then when things, as we're having fun at these dinners or having fun at these celebration nights, if somebody says something funny, we say, wow, write that down. That's a horse name. And uh, and not a capital llama came from, we were playing Midnight Taboo. Is that right? And Midnight Taboo. And I'm, I'm embarrassed to say it was my wife, but uh, maybe she was a couple of glasses of vino rosso in. And, the, and I think it was dog. And they said, not a cat, but a, and of all the animals out there, she chose mama. <laughs> Instead of dog. <laughs> and it became... A name, and uh, he's a very popular horse who's been adopted by Elise Jacobs, and I get pictures of him more than I get pictures of my daughter. That's how much she loves the horse, so it's great. Well, shout out to Maria and to Joy and your entire family that's going to be here. You say it's going to be a party no matter what, win or loss, uh, and we're just really excited for you. Maybe you could, I mean, Up and Adams is a pretty clever name. Maybe uh, maybe we could have a you know one of those well, 270 horses that you have. Well, I'm looking for sponsorship, so if you want to give me money to name one like I don't that, think I, you need I think it'd be great. Listen, I, How am I going to buy 270 horses now? I have, I, <laughs> you can sell another. You can take on Gatorade again. Like it's an insane thing. Like you were yeah. this. You know, I'm not saying you're an underdog, but now you're the favorite. Do you like being the favorite going into this? Yeah, because I've been an underdog my whole life. But you know? that's not, but aren't you more comfortable that way? I wouldn't want everybody to say I'm going to win. I don't need that pressure. Yeah, you know what. Um, I don't feel like the favorite because last year we had a horse named uh, Rich Strike who was 80 to 1 and won the race. So for people in this game, these horses are never going to run in a 20 horse field again. Yeah. It's not always the best horse that wins the Derby. It's maybe the best horse who has the best day and gets into the least trouble in the race. Because you get stopped once, maybe you can overcome it. Two times, you, you sometimes you can't. So you need a lot of racing luck in a race yeah. like this. I'm new to this sport. Tell me why Forte is my horse. Forte is your horse because he's won six out of seven. You're going to get a higher price on him than if it was a 10-horse field. He'll probably be between 3-1 to one and 7-2. to two. So if you think he's going to win... No, you, I know you like to bet like $2,000. Uh, you, you'll get back I was 000. mad. I was mad that I couldn't bet a dollar. A mean? $2 minimum? What is this? What do you think? I made a money, people? Well, good thing you don't work for a gambling network. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it works out great. I mean, okay, let's talk know. about New York. A lot of big things happening. We, you know, you got Aaron Rodgers. He's joining the Jets. We got the Knicks there on fire. It's the hottest ticket in town. You're about to potentially take home a Kentucky Derby. You won the Belmont as a New York kid. Uh, and then you've got your uh, Rick Pitino, Red Storm. I know you're excited about that. Tell me about that. Well, I I graduated St. John's, and one of the reasons why I wanted to go there was growing up, I watched Chris Mullen and Walter Berry and, and Mark Jackson, yeah. and, and I sat in the blue seats 400 and uh, went to all the games and then, uh, you know, always rooted for St. John's, and it's been a tough 20 years, but uh, I'm so happy that, you know, Rick's on board. I've been friends with Rick through horse racing, actually, for like 15, 20 years, and uh, I think it's a great story. Rick was born in Long Island. Uh, he's coming back. You know, he's a Hall of Famer. He's won two championships, and Hopefully in the next five years he gets his third. Your best advice for me handling my first derby. I hear it's a long weekend. Um, I would say pace yourself because you don't you don't want to burn out. But I would say enjoy the moment. There's nothing like it. Uh, give me a sporting event that has 160,000 people. <sighs> there isn't. Everybody dressed up. Drink the mint juleps. 16 million watching at home doing the same. Million. And when my old Kentucky home is played with about 17 minutes... Just watch your makeup because most likely tears will oh, come down. Waterproof mascara <laughs> on aisle five. All right, we were wishing you the best of luck, and we'll see you in the. Is it a winner's circle? Is that what it is with the roses? Is yes, that did I get that right? right? Yeah, that All wasn't right. hard to figure out. Winner's circle, <laughs> okay, but it's okay. okay. I, pre- <laughs> I appreciate you. Right. You won't be doing a business deal with me and selling <laughs> yeah. it for four point five billion anytime soon. We'll be back. Larry, call us. Take it away. I mean, this is beautiful Churchill Downs, Kay. Look at this place. It is absolutely fantastic. The home of the Kentucky Derby. And uh, I get to be in this room 
all the way up here with the best view in the house. I get to be in this room with <laughs> you, the voice of the Triple Crown. Larry Colmus, you are an absolute legend. You inherited this insane gig back in 2011. And let's start here with the room. Show us around. It's it's charming, it's quaint, and it's you and this. It's small. It's pretty much just enough room for me in here. We've got, uh, it's not completely set up yet. I'm going to have a monitor down in here. Okay. But now I've got my, uh, my little iPad with uh, the horses that will be running in the different races. Uh, this is the Ali Sheba race. It's going to be tomorrow. And you see Rich Strike is in there. He won the Derby last year. He's, he did. And he is running here tomorrow. So and he was a long that. shot. So I'll ask you, what was that like? And what did you learn from that experience? Because that does not happen. Completely unexpected. <laughs> you know, you're, you're like, I'm ready for anything, anything. I'm ready. And I'm like, who the heck is that? Rich Strike. How could he win? But uh, we got it in there in time. Are there any long shots that we will see on Saturday? Do you There's think a have few. a chance? There's you- a few. I don't know about a chance. Of, okay. But there are long shots. And I, if you had asked me if Rich Strike had a chance... No way. But he did win, so they have to run the race. And, we'll have to find out. And that's what makes it so fun. It's also the most challenging, right? It's the two most exciting minutes, the two best minutes in all of sports. And there's a lot of gravity. There's, what, 160,000 people here, then another 16 million watching <laughs> at home. No what pressure is, at all, right? What? How do you handle that? How do you I, handle that? I... Uh, I sweat a lot of my palms before the races. You know, I'm like, uh, come on, let's go. It's going to be okay. I'm like totally trying to just compose myself, deep breaths. It'll be fine. And then I uh, hope it is. You hydrate. You figure it out. I mean, hydrate. listen, you're a little <laughs> bit lucky for the Kentucky Derby and the Triple Crown in general because it's years and years and years. Nobody wins. And then what? Two of two of. Three? What were the numbers? Yeah, I've, I uh, my uh, I started calling in 2011, so the first Triple Crown winner was 2015, and I was also the announcer that day for the track at Belmont my first year. So it worked out pretty well, American Pharaoh, and then Justify three years later. And then you had a long shot in Brit Strike just last year. Now tell me the story of this year's Derby. It's my first one. Is there a headline that I need to be paying attention to? I think for sure the headliner is Forte, uh, the horse that's owned by Mike Rapoli. My and friend. His, your buddy Mike. And his partner, Vinny Viola, who owns the Florida Panthers. And they're doing real well. They, they just took did. down they, the Maple Leafs. And the, they beat my Boston oh, Bruins. I know. Yeah, yeah I listen, know. that New Yorker, Rapoli, he was pretty excited about that one. <laughs> but anyway, they, uh, you know, he's the horse. He uh, he was the best horse last year, the two-year-old champion. He's come back this year. He's won two races in a row. So he's the one they have to knock off. But, you know, there's, there's a bunch of other horses with some talent in there. So we're in here. It's huge. It's bigger than I expected, to be honest. I've never been here to Churchill Downs. How do you watch the horses? How do you keep track of them as they make their way around? So I, I'll use binoculars. It's just the, the best way for me to to kind of do it my way where I'm in control of what I see. And occasionally, if I, I feel like the timing is right, I'll go to a monitor and look at the monitor. But it's a, mostly binoculars, a little back and forth. We had one year, I was calling the Preakness in Baltimore, complete fog, shredded <gasps> Every couldn't see a thing and ended up having to call the race off of monitor the whole time because my binoculars, as good as they are, do not see through fog. That's, I mean, and NBC <laughs> having these fog things that happened in the Falcons game once and they used that fog cam and they almost never looked back. So they're used to that. Shout out Fred <laughs> Gadelli and the incredible team uh, with covering this with such pedigree year in, year out. We're standing here and I noticed the finish line is right behind me. Right. It's sort of at an angle, though. The way a the little bit. Oh, now, it's a little... My biggest fear in doing this is that it would be neck and neck, and I wouldn't know what to say when it is. Have you had that experience? So 12 derbies, knock on wood, not yet. Oh. not well, It hasn't not. been too close to call, but it's always in the back of your mind, like, you know, that angle, there's a little teeny bit, and uh, it bothers you because you're, you can't get a, a complete perfect look, you know? Yeah. What I learned, too, is most races, and you've called tons of them, 14 horses. This one's 20. How are you keeping track? And I asked you for a a little bit of a cheat sheet. These are your index Mm cards. It's like you're studying for a French final in high school. Exactly. And you're learning words and how to say au revoir and what it means. So what, how does this work? So each of these are the silks of the horses that are running in the Derby. So this is disarm. Okay. That's continue R. Okay. That's Angel of Empire. Okay. Want me to keep Angel going? Empire is a favorite of Ken Rudolph over there at Uh-oh. FanDuel TV. All right, I'm gonna sh- uh, we're going to test your knowledge here a little okay. bit. How about who's this guy? Oh, that's Reincarnate. That's Reincarnate. Okay, fine. That was easy. What about this one? Lord Miles. Lord Miles. You don't need these cards. What do you, so what are you eating your Cheerios and Wheaties in the morning and practicing? <laughs> 
And this is the favorite, I know. Yeah, that's him. That's it. This that's is Forte. Mr. Mr. Todd Pletcher's. That's course. right. Look at how much I know just being <laughs> You're here. You're on top of this. With the osmosis. Okay, so you <laughs> track it. You have your cards. What else did we want to ask you? We wanted to ask you, you could name all 20 horses. That was one of the games you wanted to do. We wanted to have a little bit of fun with you, and we have a bit of a game that my producers cooked up because, of okay. course, the Derby is all about high stakes. Mm -hmm. It's all about, you know, having, the, you know, making a little fun, having a little fun over at FanDuel Sportsbook, wherever you want to, or just being a fan. I'm going to ask you five Derby-related... Don't cheat, Larry. I'm going to ask you five Derby-related questions. If you get three or more right, you win. Okay. And I buy you a mint julep when all this is said and done. If I, if you get three or more wrong, I win. And if I win, I get to do the famous... And they're off into the actual <laughs> microphone. Is that a deal? Uh, you'd have to ask NBC for that part. Now, but, uh... are we, can we do that part or no? Is that I don't even know. Can we do that part? Anyone back there, Hamilton? I don't know who produced that. Can I talk into the microphone if we win this? Oh, we can't, so we're not even... Getting, okay, well, then we'll... We'll come up with anyway. something else, Okay, though. great. We'll come up with something else. We're going to ask you these questions. Which celebrity starred in the 2003 film Seabiscuit? Uh, Toby Maguire. Well done. All right. Secretariat was known as Big Red. What NFL coach shares the same nickname? Ooh, Big Red. He likes mm. cheeseburgers. He just won a Super Bowl. Oh, jeez. I, I should know this one. Andrew Reed. Rhymes with Shane. Andy Reid. Okay. Oh, Andy Reid. That's the, a loss. I should have got that one. <laughs> That's okay, because I stacked these questions against you so I could win. Finish the famous Big and Rich lyric. Save a horse. Ride a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> Lil Nas X and Billy Ray Cyrus famously saying that they were going to take their horse down to where? Oh, I know this one. I'm forgetting. It's them. not new. It's old. Not a city, but a town and not a street but a <laughs> road there we go okay well we could really do a game night together road. you and me there we go which new england patriot famously brought the party um to a whole other level in the 2014 kentucky derby Wes welker <laughs> well, well now larry you knew the answer to that one really quickly awfully fast i did not participate <laughs> in any of that you know what you did participate in i gotta ask you were you in a rick ricky rose music <laughs> video i was magnificent rick ross john legend uh, I wasn't physically there. I was, uh, my voice was. They had me call a race. And by the way, they had me do a couple of things, um, kind of making fun of 50 Cent, too, you when I was there. Fitty, well, you he know. doesn't know about it, though. Don't tell him. Okay, well, the owner of Forte is not going to like that. They did that whole vitamin water deal together. Yeah, so, but I don't think Mike knows either. He doesn't, he won't know. I won't <laughs> tell him. Larry, we're wishing you so much luck. Not that you need it. You got this thing covered. I think the lesson I learned here is the more prepared you are, the better, the better you'll feel. Sure. Right? And you can also can't figure out what will be unexpected, and you just have to deal with it in your talent. Absolutely. And a we're great have team, fun. I'm sure. We have a huge uh, team at, at NBC, and I've got an audio person right here and just in case things <laughs> fall apart, but we, we should be fine. Nothing will fall apart. Enjoy the binoculars, and you'll get a mint julep with me maybe after the race. Thank Thanks, you so Kay. much, Larry. Here we are at Churchill Down, the race for the roses, the race for the lilies. Tomorrow kicking off the... Triple Tiara, yes, I believe, the with the Tiara, Phillies. The Kentucky Oaks. I'm learning so much shit on this show this weekend. <laughs> it's amazing. How am I going to survive the weekend, Hamilton? Uh, I don't know that you are. I don't Listen, know if FanDuel Sportsbook has odds on that. But. You and I have done some kooky things in our uh, in our time together, partner, but this is probably one of the coolest things we've done. Oh, yeah, this is amazing. And the energy here already it's is insane. It's insane. And it's I, just, what is it called again? Thur Thurby. It's the Thurby it's today. It's the Thurby. I, we don't know if the Thurby existed. I don't know if the Oaks existed. Yeah. Apparently tomorrow is like... The it's a big deal. Yeah, 100,000 people are going to be here tomorrow what? for that. So, yeah. This is so stupid. Yep. I love it. Uh, Woodford Reserve, we appreciate you. Warren Moon for stopping by. It's going to be celebrities, athletes, NFL players, uh, all sorts of people. We've met the owner. I want to meet a jockey and a trainer, though. Yeah, we got to make that happen. I mean, we got another show tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know who's coming on tomorrow, but first, uh, before Bobby we even Flay. do that, Bobby Flay's on the show tomorrow. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> okay, here's my, my thing I want to talk about, though. We talked to Rapoli. Yep. He's Forte. That is my horse. I, I know it's maybe not smart to go with the favorite, but let's look at some of these odds. Forte, this is one of the two Todd Pletcher horses in the top five, if you go over and have some fun at uh, FanDuel Sportsbook. Angel Empire is Ken, Ken's favorite horse. Yep. And uh, Practical Move at 10 to 1. Yes. And Derma Satogate. Out of Japan. Out of Japan. It's Japan's dream to win the Kentucky Derby. Maybe they do it and they're able to pull it off. We talked to Larry, uh, which was amazing. How great was he? He was unbelievable. The preparation that goes into the the call of the race with all those flashcards and everything. Yeah. So we have Bobby Flanton or who else? Um, 
Is that we're it? Still, just Bobby Flay? We're still Flay? working on some things. So oh, we got to uh... be working on some things for tomorrow <laughs> then because that would be uh, a miss to not have somebody. Great. I'm trying to think. There's there's Chris. What's going on? There's a lot of things going on here. A lot of big wigs. A lot of like, like like rich people that you don't recognize because they're like the, you know, the bajillionaire rich kind of people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have no the idea. The biggest of wigs. The biggest of wigs. Where they're all wearing matching hats. What does that mean? All right, we're gonna leave. We'll see you guys tomorrow with Bobby Flay and several other amazing guests on Up and Adams, Up and the Juleps at the Derby. I'm literally kind of drunk. Oh, oh, oh.